Welcome one and all to another video tutorial. It feels ages since I last spoke to you guys but I'm back again with a Cinema 4D Thinking Particles tutorial. So let's just have a look at an example that I've prepared for you today. We have a null object that's emitting the thinking particles and then that null object is then aligned and animated along a spline. So this technique could be very useful for creating a stream of particles like so or maybe a particle reveal uh, for logos or intros could be a way to get really cool sort of flowing particles around your intro or text for example but you could use it however you wish in your project so let's go ahead and get started so I'm just going to make a new scene like so and the first thing that we want to do is create a null object and I have mine set up here or you could come to create object null object and we're going to rename this to tp underscore emitter so this is where the main thinking particles are going to be emitted the next step is to add an expresso tag so we right click cinema 4d tags right at the bottom is the expresso tag and the first step we're going to drag our thinking particles null object into our expresso editor which is going to resize it a little bit and then now we need to create a thinking particles generator and there's a few to choose from so if we right click in the editor and go to new node thinking particles and generator we have a few P-born, that's the most basic of emitters, and there's a few different ones, um, but we're going to go with P-Storm, because it allows us to have loads of options to control the particles. So what we want to do now, we want to connect the P-Storm generator to the emitter so that the particles are emitted at the centre of the null object that we created, and we can do that by we select our P, P storm node and select the input node which is the blue one and we just come up to we want emitter alignment and then on our null object we want to come to the red output and select global matrix and also global position and we're going li to link the emitter position to the global position and the emitter alignment to the global matrix and if we play now we're not going to get anything amazing but you can see we're already generating particles and that's just with two nodes so now what we're going to do is we want these particles to be in a group so what we can do is if we right click in the editor new node thinking particles and we want go down to TP standard and P group just resize this a little bit and I already have it tabbed here the thinking particles settings but you can come up to your simulate tab particles and thinking particle settings and that will get you this panel here and what we want to do is in our thinking particle settings is if you look at the group panel and we right click on all and add this is going to add a group and you can re rename this if you wish but we're just going to leave it like so and you can choose different colors for groups so it's you can easily visualize what particles are in what groups so if you have a lot of different groups that's pretty useful but we're only going to be working with one group today so we're just going to make a nice pink color like so and then what we're going to do is drag that newly made group onto our p group node and then we're going to come over to our p storm node and on the red output we're going to select particle birth and then we're going to link the particle birth to the p group like so and if we play now, what we should see is some nice pink particles, like so. So if we just take a quick look at what 
what's actually happening here. So we have our main null object and then we have our p storm emitter which is generating the particles at the center of the null object and when those particles are born they then go into our p group 1 also known as the pink group and then that allows us to see the pink particles so that's pretty cool already we've got some particles going on so the next step is to add some maybe wind or turbulence to get the particles a bit more movement and a bit more dynamic so to do that we're going to right click new node thinking particles and we're going to go on to TP initiator and P pass and we're just going to resize this and the next step we're going to maybe add some wind or velocity so if we right click new node again thinking particles dynamic you can see we have quite a few to choose from gravity friction freeze deflector um, velocity wind for the moment we're just going to select wind and what we're going to need to do now is create a new null object so once again come up to create objects null object come back to our objects tab we want to create a null object like so and we're going to call this p wind and we're going to make that a child of the tp emitter and we're going to drag that p wind null onto our p wind node and then we're going to link up the p pass to the p wind like so and if we hit play now we're not going to see much difference with the wind but we're going to play with the settings in a little bit so if we come over to our p storm node and you select the node you can see we have a load of parameters that we can change and affect so first thing I'm just going to rotate the emitter I'm just going to rotate it on the P value to 90 degrees so the particles are emitting upwards like so and if we come over to our P storm and we take a look at some of the parameters that we can affect so the type we have a circle or a rectangle we're just going to stick with circle for the meantime birth type there's count rate and shoot or shot um, the rate is it will have a specific number so you can set a specific number to emit or you can select shot which will basically shoot the particles out so if we just play now we have birth type shot and the shot at one and that's not looking too much different but for example if we change the shot value to 10 you can see we get a load more particles being born and emitted from the null object the next one is life and life variation so currently it's set to 90 frames so the particles will last for 90 frames whereas if we set this to maybe 40 frames you're going to see after 40 frames the particles begin to die like so but we're just going to keep that at 90 frames for now the, the one after that is speed so if we set this to 200 you're going to see the speed of the particles that are emitted double so you can see particles are coming out twice as fast now but once again we're going to leave that just at the default value the next important one is the x and y field of view this is basically how far or how small the 
emitter that is going to emit. So if we set this to 360 degrees, you're going to see that the particles are emitting a full 360 degrees around the emitter like so. Whereas if we set this to maybe 20 degrees and hit play, you're going to see we get a very narrow sort of field of view for the particles. So we're going to keep this at around 20 or 25 for the field of view like so. The next one is the X and Y size. So this is the size of the emitter. So if we change this down to 50, you're going to see the radius of the emitter is 50% smaller like so. And this is kind of what we're going for. Um, the last one is distance, so if we increase the distance, that's the distance from which the particles are emitted from the emitter. So if we hit play now, you can actually see that the particles are being emitted slightly away from the emitter. But we don't need that just yet, but you may need that in your scene depending on what you're doing. So that's the P-Storm settings. Feel free to play around with different settings. You're welcome to try new settings, see what works for you. And if we take a look at the P wind settings now, we can start to change some of the wind parameters. So the first one that we're going to change is turbulence. We're going to change this up to 100. And if we preview this, you can see we have a little bit more movement to our particles. We may want to turn the frequency up just a little bit. We'll try 10, see how that looks. It's looking good. The structure size, we're going to change to 1. And we're going to see how that looks. We might have to change it back up, but we we'll see how it looks. That's not looking too bad. We may want to increase the turbulence to maybe 200 and also the frequency to 20. You could also try changing the structure size to 100 just to see how that looks. We're just going to set this to 50 for this structure size. 